Hey, what's up everybody? It's your girl Tanya Lady T and this is another edition of All Aboard. Let's get on this train. Well, good morning. I hope everybody's doing well and continuously soaking up God's daily benefits. Amen. Um, I just wanted to stop by and say hey everybody. As I've been stating all year, this has just been a very busy year for me and my family. Um, but I did want to come on and talk real quickly about the subject as it relates to our family, uh, even close friends, but specifically our children. Um, and what I want to talk about this morning is somebody, somebody better say something. This weekend there was a, uh, funeral in our community where a young 17 year old young man took his life and he committed suicide of course no one is uh, everyone is dumbfounded as to why what happened what was going on in this young man's life where he uh, took his life some say you know he was on different types of substance abuse Whatever the case, this young man also came from somewhat a prominent family, I guess extended relatives prominently. So anyway, of course with all funerals, especially when it comes to young people, there's a community outcry um, and the family members of that loved one will come from here and far to attend uh, the funeral services. Now I'm going to tell you something. This young man is one of those me, uh, young men that um, his relatives live on the back, on the other side, which is uh, you know the back of my parents' backyard. Well, his his family lived on the back side of the of the street. And so I can remember way back in the day whenever my ne nephews were young, you know, young little boys, nine, ten year old, they would have different friends come in from the neighborhood. They all would be playing in the backyard. Well, this young man was one of them. Just, you know, my mom fed him, gave him Kool-Aid, you know, that type of thing. My mom is known as uh, Ma, Ma Howe, you know, her house is like Grand Central Station. I mean, so many generations already have grown up in her or have run through her house, I should say. So anyway, of course, you know, with this death, again, brought a lot of relatives. And I'm going to tell you, there was a lot of cars, understandably. And all these cars, you know, 10 Mercedes, about three or four Jag, you know, just prominence. Again, that that's not what I'm wanting to throw out, but I'm, I'm saying that to make a point. All these people, God Almighty, all these people were attending and coming in, and you know, folks was talking and well, what happened, you know, all you know that those are just things that that leave questions in people more head. What happened? What happened? But you know, me and my mother were talking and I thought, you know, out of all that, you know, we were just thinking and it just, again, dropped so heavily in our spirit is that where were all these people when, when this boy was living? And I'm not saying that, you know, every, you know, you doing quarterbacking on Monday or you doing the hindsight thing on Monday, the woulda, coulda, shoulda. But I know a lot of times, I'm just going to put it out there, we as parents, we're so busy trying to buy our children stuff because we want them to live better than what we've lived. And that's nothing wrong with that. But then we're not giving them the life applications to live. We're not teaching them anything. Are we really truly saying something to our children? Yes, we can tell them to be 
uh, achieve high scholastics. That's absolutely that. That's part of parenting. But are we doing the most critical parts and saying something to our children? Somebody better say something. Don't let it be on your watch that something horrible goes down and, 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 and folks looking at you or you question yourself, what happened? I just don't understand what happened. Is it because sometimes as parents we're afraid somewhat to say something to our children because we don't want to rock the boat? We don't want to, we, you know, we don't want to confront? No. Sometimes a confrontation has to happen in order for a situation to be brought to a head. And I understand you don't want to live in a household where you're constantly talking at your children and not talking to your children, but somebody needs to say something. I've talked about this before, even with mine. I refuse to, 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 to not say something to him because I don't want to hurt his feelings or because that's my child and I'm not supposed to say that to him hardcore. Yeah, you better say it. You better let it hear. You, he better hear it from your lips. Because when they get out there in society, the society really don't care nothing about you. Not really. So here it is. You know, we, we're, 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 we're witnessing people weeping, and rightfully so. But we have got to start talking to our children. We have got to start saying something to our children. You know, there was some a group of young men that came to visit my mother. And uh, they just said, listen, we're out, we graduated from high school and we just need some directions. What do we do? See, again, we push our children to graduate high school, graduate high school. But then we don't have, there's a lot of inner city children. There's a lot of children, period. They don't have anyone helping them through that transition from high school to going into their lives, living their lives, making decisions that will affect the rest of their lives. There's no transition. Some some children they they're not gonna uh, want to go to college. Some 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 young adults they're not interested in going into the military. So how do we have them transition? We can say go get a job. Okay, well they they may not even know how to conduct themselves in the interview. See stuff like that. We talk at our children, but then we don't give them the necessary tools. To work to, to, to survive in this society. So what do they do? They learn from the streets what to do. Is a, a lot of times they'll learn uh, the wrong way. And here it is: you get a phone call uh, asking for bail money, or you getting a phone call because you got to now dress your child in a suit for his funeral. I mean, it's serious out here, y'all. I'm telling you, don't let it be on your watch. That you didn't say something to your child. Don't let it be on your watch. That because you're so busy trying to get them things. That they don't learn anything. All they know is what they can get out of people. All they know is what they want. They go to parents to get. But then again as I talked to before. They got to get it for themselves. They've got to learn how to make decisions on their own. But we as parents, as a community, we have got to learn how to talk and say something of substance to our children. And you know, you might hear some people say, well, you know, uh, my child grew up in a single family home. How he gonna be a, a man and he ain't never had a man around him or he don't know what a man look like because he ain't never been around one. I, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus because you know how I look at it too. What about all the young men and women that grew up with parents, both parents in the home, and they still got out here in society and act a fool and didn't do right in school and, and, and turn to this and turn to that, that that led to their own destruction. So no, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't accept that. That's not going to be something I accept for none of my nieces, nephews, and even my own son who grew up in a single family home, which was me. No, I'm not going to accept that. And I'm not going to accept, you know, when people say that, uh-uh, absolutely not. Because like I said, there's too many children out there that's got, that's in a two-parent home and they still 
get out there and act the fool. And they saw what their mama and daddy did. And they grew up under their mama and daddy roof. Oh yeah, my mother told me to get up and do my this and do my that and she made sure I had this and that and the other. But then her lifestyle was so wickedy whack that when I finally got out there on my own, I started doing the same, mimicking the same thing she was doing. So no, don't, don't I, I don't, I, I can't accept that either. I, I, you know, that vexes me when people say that. Well, he can't. He, you know, how can a how can a, a boy become a man when he ain't never had a, a father? Uh. Okay. Well, explain why the ones that do have fathers in the household still wind up jacked up. So now, come again with something else. So again, we 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 hear things and it sounds good because folks say it on TV. Uh. -uh no, honey. Reality says no. You better say something to your children. You better let them know that uh, if you go down this road now, uh, it's going to lead to your destruction. We can't be afraid to talk and say something to our children. We just can't. But my thing is, you know, as a community of people, where were, you, where were all these people before that child died while he was living? And that's all I'm saying, that we need to say something to our children or our loved ones. Why they're here. That's why the thing says, give me my flowers while I'm here. Because <laughs> when I'm dead and gone, I'm, I'm with the Lord. And I'm in the best place. So we need to say something to our children while they're living. Amen. Anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about this morning. Get that off my chest. Because somebody maybe need to hear that. So anyway. I hope everyone has a good and productive work week. I love you all for watching me and commenting. Um, and so may God bless you. And may the peace of the Lord be with you. And remember, say something. You better say something. Amen. All right, God bless you.